I'm Paul Beckwith. Very, very recently, a report came out by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence in the U.S. And the particular group in the National Intelligence uh, Council, um, the organization, um, is the Strategic Futures Group. So the report is called Global Trends 2040 and, you know, basically looks at what, what the intelligence community people think our world will look like over the next 20 years, you know, how it will progress and what will happen. And the idea of this report is to allow people, allow governments and policymakers you know, and the report is open access to everybody, the general public. It, it, it aims to let us pr try to prepare for an array of possible futures. Now, this is the seventh edition of the report. It's come out every four years since 1997. And the main theme of this report um, is that we're, we're going to have a more contested world. So what um how it basically approaches this problem is it looks at what it calls structural forces um, that are changing society that are shaping the future strategic environment and this includes demographics plus human development where the demographics of the planet are definitely shifting there's some countries that have tremendous population growth, okay, some very poor countries, and many Western countries can only maintain their population with um, massive immigration. So, and also, lot, many countries are, are having an, an aging, a, a significantly aging workforce, and so there's going to be more and more people relying on the social services, et cetera, of, um, you know, if countries have that, um, that are generated and paid for by younger people that are um, in, in the workforce. Um, and health is a big factor in that, obviously. This, especially, you know, health is on everybody's mind. This being a, you know, after a year of dealing with uh, COVID-19. The next... Uh, structural force sort of subcategory is of course the environment and climate change you know is topping that and i'll specifically look in detail at that particular section but i recommend reading the whole report and i'll probably have other videos discussing other aspects of the report um you know it's a it's a tough it's a tough read um but it's well worth having a look another category is economics and then the fourth category is technology. So those are considered the structural forces that are shaping the future strategic environment. And then it looks at what it calls the emerging dynamics. It explores how populations, so or individuals, people within populations, um, how uh, you know many people are disillusioned and with governments. We've got a divided. Um, you know, we've got a populace that can be informed if they choose to, but they get into these information silos and there's a lot of ideological thinking and nationalism and this is dividing um, society and both within countries and between countries. Of course, the state, um, you know, countries, you know, tensions and turbulence and... Um, you know, as there's stresses from climate change on resources, on food and water, there's going to be more tensions between states. And then on the international level, you know, more contested, um, more, more contested um, jockeying for, for power, more uncertain, uncertainty and very conflict prone. And within that is, is, is terrorism. Now, the report then comes up with five scenarios, five future scenarios for the world in 2040. Now, it's not 
predictive. They explore the possibilities. Okay, so you know it's a bit it, it's a bit speculative, uh, but and they say you know in the report we offer this analysis with humility, knowing that invariably the future will unfold in ways that we have not foreseen. So the scenarios involve the renaissance of democracies, strong democracies. The opposite from that, a world adrift. Um, competitive coexistence, you know, in a world stressed severely by climate change. Separate silos is another uh, scenario. And tragedy and mobilization. And I'll talk a bit more about the tragedy and mobilization scenario because this scenario uh, foresees uh, global food shortages, say, within the next 10 years, causing huge hardship to societies around the planet. And then mobilization of people to, um, to deal with, to increase the food supply and to deal with the abrupt climate changes. So I'll talk about those sort of things, but this is a very, you know, it's a very interesting report. And I've had some feedback and uh, I've been told that my uh, climate, um, abrupt climate system change viewpoints have, have actually played a fairly significant role in to the to the authors of this report um, they they've actually um, you know they've actually used it so that's that's encouraging um, so that's encouraging so um, you know and they you know with these global challenges and fragmentation of populations um, you know people are gravi people gravitate to their information silos with people who share similar views it's probably for security and peace of mind. Um, those are the pros. It gives people sort of comfort to be part of a tribe or a group of like-minded people. But the cons are many. Uh, people are siloed. You know, cults uh, can spring up. And crazy, crazy viewpoints that are devoid of reality or, or separated from reality. The world is intricately um, bound by connectivity, but at this, by the same token, we're fragmenting in different directions. So topics of st that are stressed are the disequilibrium, uncertainty, um, um, you know, people being in, in uh, contests and countries being in contests and competing. When there's limited resources, this, this tends to happen. Um, you know, major powers jockeying for new so-called rules of the road by controlling inform information, media, trade, and te technical innovations. And, you know, adapt adaptation from, like climate change will, will force all states and societies to adapt to a warmer planet. You know, the demographic shifts leading to highly um, aged populations, for example, in China, Japan, South Korea, and Europe, are going to put lots of stresses on people. Uh, technologies like AI will really throw a wrench into things and, and so on. But um, I'm going to focus on the environmental section. Um, so let me uh, bring up the computer here and show you the report. Okay, so this is the report. Okay, so you can find this report. Just Google Global, Global Trends 2040. And the document, if you download the whole document, it's 156 pages. Uh, you know, that includes reference and so on and so on. But I find to read individual sections, it's actually easier to read if you just look at the online version. Okay, so basically, you know, when they talk about the um, scenarios, um, you know, in, in 2040, they start at 2020. They talk about the COVID-19 pandemic that has wreaked havoc across the world, killing more than, it's more than 3 million people now. Um, as of April 2021, devastating families and communities, disrupting economies economies and political dynamics within and between countries and so on. 
And they talk about, because it's sort of, it's ongoing. I mean, people are being vaccinated, but there's variations springing up. So it starts with, uh, you know, how we continue to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic and then uh, takes things forward. So the structural forces I mentioned are here and then the emerging dynamics are here. Um, and then, then there's the five uh, different scenarios. So let's look at the environment um, in particular. So the environment, okay, as a structural force of change. So, you know, it, it's 2020. This is for, you know, what's, this is looking forward to 2040. During the next 20 years, the physical effects from climate change of higher temperatures, sea level rise, and extreme weather events will impact every country. The costs and challenges will disproportionately fall on the developing world, intersecting with environmental degradation to intensify risks to our basic requirements, food, water, health, and energy security. Okay, there will be increased emphasis on mitigating greenhouse gas emissions to achieve net zero with new energy technologies and carbon dioxide removal techniques. So, so this report foresees um, a lot of efforts in carbon dioxide removal technologies and techniques, developing these. Okay, and as we get closer to this 1.5 degrees Celsius, in some cases we've actually been passing it, and then remember the baseline when we talk about 1.5. You know, so if you take a baseline of 1880 to 1910, which is what this report does, like many other reports, it says that we'll, 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 we'll basically pass 1.5 within 20 years, and this will lead to calls for increases in geoengineering research and possible deployment to cool the planet despite possibly dire consequences okay that's what the report says i say you know the the, the dire consequences we need to worry about are if we don't figure out carbon dioxide removal and we don't figure out solar radiation management to stabilize the planet um, this year um, people had some people like had high hopes that that the recovery money for getting the things moving um, after this year, uh, due to the you know all the slowdowns from COVID nineteen, would would go all would go into renewable energies. But alas, billions and billions of dollars have gone into the fossil fuel industry. Okay, we have not learned our lesson, despite the dire state of the climate and dis despite the wrenching changes that are coming down in the pipes governments around the world have still put i believe numbers are something like 350 billion dollars of subsidies and money going to the fossil fuel industry this year it's just it's just insane it's 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 insane so you know here we have climate change environmental so climate change higher temperatures both atmosphere and ocean melting out arctic Arctic's getting much darker, it's disrupting the jet streams, causing the extreme weather events, although they don't make that connection here. Sea levels rising, rapidly accelerating as we get more and more calving and loss of ice from both on Greenland and Antarctica, not to mention alpine glaciers. Environmental degradation, land degradation, water misuse, pollution, all of this erodes human security, our food, water, and energy security, human health. We're get, there's a lot more mi migration going on as people have to move out of areas that have been hit by disasters and often they don't go back, loss of natural capital. So the drivers of change are societal and government change and we have energy technologies and adaptation efforts. Um, the key challenges are the pace. Things are, we're having abrupt climate change. Things are happening very fast. We're in a climate emergency, unequal burdens um, around the planet, and the idea of geoengineering, and there's a lot of room for instability and conflict. So um, I'm going to uh, continue this in a second video because this stuff is actually quite interesting and very important. So thank you for listening. 
please check out my blog, paulbeckwith.net, and please consider donating to my efforts. Thanks.